Let's just pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come and open your word and just <coughs> fellowship, just commune with you and with each other, that you would be glorified today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to talk about the blood, the blood. 1 Peter 1, we hear of the precious blood, precious blood. The word blood occurs some 400 times in the word of God. The blood's right back there in Genesis, right back there when we see Cain shed the blood of his brother Abel. In the book of beginnings, we see then the blood as the Lord God provided a covering in Genesis 3 verse 21. God provided a covering as the blood was shed. It speaks to us of atonement, of grace. We see the blood then in Revelation, right through to Revelation, where the Lord Jesus returns clothed with a robe dipped in his blood. We see right through from Genesis to Revelation the scarlet cord, if you like, as we see even the, the um, prostitute Rahab, she was saved by that scarlet cord that hung from her window as the sign of redemption, of salvation. We see the blood of Jesus right through the pages of the Word of God. And we see the blood of Jesus has some very vital effects. And we see that in 1 Peter 1 verse 18, it's called the precious blood. 1 Peter 1 verse 18, it says, For as much as you know that, you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. The precious blood. Precious means precious. It means valuable. It means costly. Do we consider the value of the blood? In the writings of Peter, we see precious faith. We see precious blood. We see precious promises. We see He is precious as the living stone. But today, just to look at that precious blood, just to consider that precious blood, the value of it, the importance of it for a moment, the value of the blood, we see that it redeems, as we just read. We see that it purchases the church of God, as we read in Acts 20, verse 28, where the elders are exhorted to take heed to the flock of which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. The church of God purchased with his own blood. The value of the church is seen there in the value of the blood being precious. The church is precious too. It's a precious, glorious privilege we have to get together with brothers and sisters here below as we prepare for the time when we'll be forever together in the hereafter. And there's three things that we could see stand out about the blood that I've um, noted. It's innocent blood, innocent blood, perfect blood. We know it's without spot, it's, it's spotless, it's pure, unadulterated, the blood of Jesus of a sinless, spotless lamb. And it speaks to us of substitution. That innocent blood, innocent, had to be innocent, it had to be perfect blood, speaks to us of substitution. We see, secondly, it was shed blood. The blood had to be poured out. It was shed blood to create an atonement and an at one moment with God. Salvation is always by grace through faith in shed blood and redemption as a purchasing, as a purchase price for the slave from the market place of sin. Redemption, we purchased from the slave market of sin. It was innocent blood, it was shed blood, and it is applied blood. The blood has to be applied. As we see through the word of God, the blood was applied as the covenant of blood was made right through the pages of scripture. Because as Leviticus 17.11 says, the life is in the blood. He's given it to, uh, to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. That's Leviticus 17.11. 
So let's just travel through the pages of scripture just briefly to consider the blood. Consider the blood today. The blood, it's a repeated theme. The blood was there with Abraham and Isaac. And Genesis 22, verses 1 to 13, we see the account there. And what did God do? God will provide himself a lamb. God will provide himself a lamb. We see it there at the time of the Passover, where God's great deliverance of his people was made possible by the blood in Exodus 12. We see that Moses sprinkled the people with the blood in Exodus 24, verse 8, a sign of sanctifying, even though the people then shortly after uh, went into gross sin. And yet the blood was a sign as a sprinkling upon the people of God's capacity to make us holy. We see the blood in the tabernacle. In the colours of the tabernacle we see purple, for royalty, we see blue for the heavenly dimension and we see scarlet for the blood redemption. The blood was there right through in so many pictures. So what are the benefits of this blood? What are the benefits of the blood? We see that the blood washes our sins away. In Revelation 1 it says unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. That was the cry, that was the song that they sang. And then it says, Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so. Amen. Even so, he has washed us from our sins in his own blood. And this cleansing power of the blood, it's still happening right now. Because in 1 John 1 verse 7, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Cleanseth, present tense. It's a continual, continual effect. A continuous effect of cleaning, of cleansing, of the washing of the blood. There's the peace with God through the blood. In Colossians 1 verse 20 it says, And having made peace through the blood of his cross. In Romans 5 9 we see the blood justifies. It says, Much more than being now justified by the blood, by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So we see, just to recap thus far, he redeems us, he washes us, he gives us peace and he justifies us. And before we are saved, we are separated from God. We are cut off from Him. There's a big barrier, a big boundary, a separation. It says, Isaiah 59, our Lord says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid His face from you, that He will not hear. But thank God the blood makes that connection again. We see in Ephesians 2, verse 13, it says, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who are sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ makes us closer to God. Even though once the Bible says of the lost, we are enemies of the cross of Christ. Philippians 3, verse 18, Yet now by the blood we brought near, we brought nigh, made nigh, and we brought into peace. We brought into access unto our God. As it says in Hebrews 10, verse 19, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. We've got a privilege here to remember the blood. And uh, it's our privilege to enter that holiest by the blood of Jesus today. Uh, in a figurative way, uh, as it were. And yet, in a real spiritual way, that access is always available. It's always made possible for us. In Hebrews 9.14 it says that the blood cleanses our conscience. You know, you might think, I'm too far away from God. My sins have separated me from God. I'm not worthy today. I know that I stumble and fail. I know that my conscience is filled with memories, with thoughts of sins I've committed or neglect of my failings of my miserable, sinful inclinations. 
Yet the Bible says we have entered, we can enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. It says in Hebrews 9 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ, talking in the context of the Old Testament sacrifices, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience, purge or cleanse, wash, clean your conscience, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. There's a cleansing of our mind, a cleansing of our thoughts, of our, um, of our thinking patterns, a, a cleansing of our conscience, a cleansing away of our guilt, of our shame, so that we can have new minds that think like He does, so that we can discern biblically right from wrong. He can purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And lastly, the blood of Christ comes to give us power to overcome. We read back in Revelation where the saints were rejoicing. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the dead. Of course it's talking in the concepts of the martyrs of Revelation. But I believe we too can overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We too can have victory by the blood of the Lamb today. And I want to urge you to realise that today.